Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Inside Insurance, where today we have a special focus on AI in insurance. Uh, my name is Jean Ray, I'm a consulting partner here at KPMG and I'm your host for the series. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Rory Timlin. Uh, Rory is a partner in our consulting practice and he specialises in all things data, AI and digital transformation. He has over 20 years experience in the space and prior to joining KPMG, he led a data and AI product portfolio for clients of financial services, life sciences and the public sector. So an impressive uh, resume there, uh, Rory. I suppose you're obviously deep in the weeds of all this with clients and helping them with their AI adoption strategy, implementation and so on. I suppose before we get into any detail, it might be just useful to level set, I suppose, where we are more generally from an adoption perspective and I suppose how you see that landscape evolving over the next few years as well. Yeah, no, thanks, Jean. And it's uh, great to be here yeah. inside insurance. <laughs> um, so no, that's a, a good question. And it's a question that's on so many of our clients' lips as well, because, you know, in insurance, AI, particularly machine learning, is, is not a new topic. And it's a technology that's been adopted by you know, a majority of insurers for 15, maybe 20 years mm, in some instances. Yeah. And recently, when I say recently, over the last two and a half years, mm. there's been a lot of advancement and, of course, a lot of hype around yeah. AI. Yeah. Um, and so what a lot of our clients are really trying to be very precise about at the moment is really understanding three things is return on investment and value, hmm. um, the path from experimentation to scale, uh, and of course, safety, and with yeah. that, trust and regulatory compliance. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the broad yeah. set of considerations. And I think really when it comes to value, particularly in insurers, hmm. you know, the technology isn't new, but the range of applications is hmm. significantly grown. Yeah. And so we definitely see AI use cases spreading out from, you know, more financial underwriting pricing mm, yeah. into digital experience claims. Uh, and with the availability of more data, of course, options around more precision, more personalization, yeah. uh, greater fidelity in asset management, things like that. Mm. So we have to look at the growth in data capability and availability in line with the growth in AI. Mm. And I think people are really beyond asking what AI is, yeah. accepting it's a part of the digital tool set that they will adopt mm. yeah. and really understanding what the return on investment is and where the use cases mm. are most relevant to their particular business and in this case their particular yeah. insurance business. Yeah. And you touched on use cases yeah. there and yeah. also the value chain, I suppose, from underwriting through to claim yeah. settlement. I suppose you've seen a lot of use cases, right, yeah. um, and growing use cases. And I suppose of those you've seen, what do you think is most impactful or useful for the industry? Um, I suppose it, it kind of depends on the insurer, yeah, really. And, does, yeah. you know, the domains, I think, which we've seen are, especially in the, sort of the emerging AI space, the mm. most readily addressable is one, the you know, efficiency and cost effectiveness in the claims, right? Yeah. Particularly in you know, m motor mm. you know, assets, health, right? Where yeah. there is a more B2C element and there's a higher volume of customer interaction and frequency yeah. of claims. And so we've definitely seen you know, automation and personalization and digital experience through AI yeah. uh, make a huge impact on, you know, I suppose, the speed uh, of decision making and I suppose speed of customer interaction on, on the claim side, but also where I've seen, particularly in health actually and uh, with clients over the last couple of years, operational efficiency in the back office of claims mm. processing. Yeah. So I can think of a couple of examples of actually American insurers where, you know, we were doing a lot of medical claims assessment and being mm. able to really, one, automate a lot of the procedural elements, but yeah. two, start to add a lot more precision in the medical domain through you know, deep learning and natural mm. language processing. And it's not to take human clinicians out of the health yeah. claim assessment, yeah. but it was able to really expedite some of the decision making on one hand, mm. but also accuracy around the claims process. Yeah. So I think it's, it, it, and that's supposed whether you ask for impact, I've seen impact there, mm -hmm. but also like we've seen impact in, in different insurance lines where people being able to add different data sources and being more accurate around um, yeah. pricing is a huge area where there mm. is potential impact. Yeah. But to name two, and there are others, of there course, are others, Jane, obviously, yeah. as well, yeah. And I think 
It's useful to kind of hear yeah. the, the benefits and efficiency being one, right? Yeah. But you touched on a few challenges as well at the start. So yeah. there was uh, ROI, scalability yeah. um, and safety, right? Yeah. So we might just expand on, on some of the challenges as yeah. well that you see, particularly given it's a highly regulated industry, I suppose, as well. Yeah, so where do you want to start? <laughs> Don't mind. Uh, maybe um, safety. It's a sa Yeah, safety Safety's a broad topic, yeah. right? And I think most... Most, most companies that are, are digitally adept at the moment are looking yep. at safety in the broadest sense, right? And yep. safety, like, okay, it, you know, safety in the digital world is everything from cybersecurity to management of your data to, yep. you know, impact on companies and individuals and mm. technology. So it's yep. a broad church, right? Yep. Um, but when we're talking specifically about AI, I think we're looking at the regulatory impact of inference, actually, yes. or automatic decision making yep. in insurance. And so really, let's look at that and pick that apart. Obviously, the, the most recent legislation mm -hmm. or regulatory impact that is sort of a hot topic is the EU AI Act. Yeah. Um, and, you know, insurers are no stranger to regulated models. Mm. And I think we all know that. And yeah. this is a new form of regulation that people have to modify and really examine their uh, model management and model assessment yes. frameworks mm. to make sure that a different type of model, an AI model, fits into that and that their, yeah. their, their frameworks are fit for purpose. Where it's getting, I suppose, slightly new is that with large language models or with, um, you know, the ability to put AI into different parts of either the customer experience yeah. or the enterprise or operations, that models are entering domains of the business that actually aren't used to working with mm. models. And so it's yeah. expanding the reach and yeah. the implication of, of, of frameworks that people have. Mm. So if I look into the EUI Act, some of the, the first parts of compliance are to identify the use case domains where yeah. you're using a technology, in this instance AI, and also making sure that um, your model uses are classified mm -hmm. and also that the models are maintained and operated and monitored in, a, in the right way. And so that brings compliance, extends it into different parts of the operation. Mm. So you can see that that is impactful and it's not hugely onerous, but there is yeah. incumbent on people to understand their initial starting position or the current lie of the land. And that's just really in respect of understanding how models operate. But a huge part of compliance as well is in understanding the quality of your data mm -hmm. and understanding, yeah. you know, how and where data is used in decisioning. Yeah. Yeah. And that obviously, you know, there's a number of regulatory frameworks that are relevant to that. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. least GDPR, which yeah. insurers will be well familiar with, yeah. but I think there's an extension here now in just understanding how data is used in decision making. And if AI is adopted, there are of course implications for how you understand yeah. how models are making decisions. Mm. And that's probably a new domain for a lot of insurers and companies when it comes into more sophisticated technologies such as you know, more advanced machine learning and yeah. deep learning where the decision criteria of models is harder or sometimes black box to understand. And that's a new consideration hmm. um, for insurers. So you mentioned black box uh, models, and I suppose what we would see is probably mixed, I suppose, practice in that regard where some, some uh, I suppose, participants are starting to steer away from black box or, or models yeah. that are less explainable and stick with the ones that are more explainable, mm -hmm. um, more traditional models, for example, um, just because they're more transparent and explainable yeah. and so on to consumers, for example. Yeah. But that obviously is an area of it's continuing to evolve all the time. Yeah. Maybe just to get some of your thoughts on that and, and where you see all of that going. This could become the longest uh, <laughs> inside insurance uh, podcast <laughs> ever uh, because because it's well, it's a dense domain and it's an emergent field. Yeah. Right. So um, I think the first thing is that to level set, there are in the AI world, there are yeah. really talking about machine learning here. And yeah. there are some machine learning techniques that by design are more explainable. Yes. So yeah, things yeah. like that are based on linear regression or yeah. decision trees yeah. where it's the outcome of modeling is quite easily interpretable yeah. once you understand what variables are being used. Yeah. Now it's not absolutely easy, yes. but it, it is very addressable. Yeah. Yeah. The challenge is in more deep learning yeah. or uh, based approaches where there's different layers within a model and it's yeah. very unclear, even to developers, yeah. how decisions are made and how parameters are weighted mm. in decision making. So that's the challenge. Yeah. Right? There are emerging fields such as counterfactual explanation mm. or challenger models or complementary models where you can put 
decision-making apparatus around yeah. these models to dis explain not exactly how they work, but to explain the, explain the basis upon which decisions mm. are made. Yeah. So there's a range of complementary techniques that are making mm. uh, it, you can derive how black box models explain their, make their yeah. decisions. Yeah. So very wordy, but yeah. that's the emerging that's field. Going, right? yeah. That's where it's going. Yeah. Now, as the regulation is open to interpretation, mm -hmm. um, yeah. people are starting to explore application of these technologies yeah. to regulation. So it's an emerging field. Yeah. I think insurers will be able to use black box modeling techniques yeah. with complementary technologies. Yeah. But it's not cut and dried at the moment. At the moment and I think yeah. it's an emerging space. Yeah. Now, whether that's worthwhile to do yeah. comes right back to the return on investment mm. yeah. point. Yeah. You know? Maybe we'll do another <coughs> follow-up sometime in the black boxes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There'll be uh, a bit more yeah. to say about it then. But maybe just back to the ROI and you all mentioned scalability yeah. as challenges. Anything yeah. you want to draw attention to there? Yeah, like and these, the two actually are very closely linked. Yeah. Right, and sometimes when you people talk about the AI emerging fields at the moment, yeah. and it's it's all encompassing, and it's there's a lot of frankly there's a lot of noise, Jean. Mm. Right, so yeah. when we look at AI, there's probably in my own mind to delineate a little bit about the application space. So one is the whole set of new tools people can use for their own personal productivity, mm. with things like Copilot being yeah. you know in people's mind space, but of course there are others. Then there is the range of AI that can be applied to operational processes and making them better. Yes. So yeah. be it claims processing, which mm. you've discussed a lot, or be it digital experience, or be it yeah. you know, the mechanics of underwriting. And then there's a kind of another level of AI application in business, which is taking a, a company's data and developing bespoke AI with that, mm. um, which you know, companies like Netflix, for example, have been doing mm. that for years and it's yeah. part of their product and their IP. Yeah. So there's different levels of application. All of those mm. have different impact on a business yeah. and all have a different investment profile, but also different technology and organizational mm. needs yeah. to scale. Yeah. So when we're talking scale, we're talking investment, mm. technological infrastructure required and organizational capability to scale. And so if I look at our recent technology survey, uh, particularly, um, or global technology report, should I say, you know, nearly 80% of executives mm -hmm. are saying they see value in AI use cases, mm -hmm. but 19% say they're effectively scaling them in their organization for a range of yeah. reasons. And yeah. so it's really trying to actually understand how people can benefit from valuable AI use cases and make them pervasive in their business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's the that's sort the of challenge. that's the challenge around scale. And yeah. I don't think insurers are particularly different yeah, from yeah. other financial services companies yeah. in that yeah. regard. Yeah. Well thanks Million. We've covered a lot of ground today. Yeah. Um, I suppose before we wrap up, I suppose if there is one thing you'd like the audience to take from today, um, what would that be? Um, if it's an an insurance audience, yeah. right, uh, I think I think over the course of this year I think the, you know, hopefully some of the noise around AI yeah. will subside a little bit. But I think for insurance, you know, it's very clear that this is a technology that is part of the furniture and is here to stay. Yeah. So I think it's incumbent on people in insurance really to understand how this technology impacts both their particular yeah. product area, but also the range of processes, the range of activities, the range of partners they will need yeah. to be effective, uh, you know, in, in their field. Yeah. And when I say partners, you know, what's really interesting in the insurance space is the number of fintech or technology providers that are entering the market with discrete offerings and products yeah. in the data area. And yeah. so I think while the industry, you know, is advancing, really the technology landscape is actually evolving mm. quite quickly yeah. in respect of capabilities and respect of the number of players. Yeah. So I think open-mindedness to open that is going to be important. Yeah. Okay, well, we're very open-minded here at Inside Insurance, so we look forward to it. So thanks for joining me again. It was a great discussion. Um, and thanks, everybody, for joining as well. As usual, if any of the topics today uh, resonate with you, please feel free to get in touch with myself, Rory, or your usual uh, KPMG contact. 
Thanks for joining and we look forward to seeing you again soon.